So you're probably not gonna believe what I'm about to say because when I left you guys yesterday, we were kind of drunk. <laughs> but two people are missing today because they're sick. And when I say sick, I don't mean hungover. They actually got food poisoning, and I swear that's what actually happened. So Jody sadly is in her room uh, with food poisoning. Tater's in his room with food poisoning. Hi. And uh, we're going on another boat cruise. Feel a little bit guilty leaving them behind to go cruise around these beautiful islands, but that's exactly what we're gonna do. Um, we have a little bit of a smaller boat today, which should be fun. A little bit more speed, a little bit more bumpy on the waves. And actually the owner of Hello El Nido is joining us today as well, which should be awesome. So yeah, it should be fun today. We'll have Ganny and his wife on board with us today. And we're doing basically tour B here in El Nido, which people have said really good things about, but I've never ever done. So I'm excited for this. did some snorkeling and I actually forgot to check in before we started snorkeling. So I'm gonna show you the footage now. But it was pretty cool, we got in there, there was lots of fish. We even saw a clownfish, and it was like being live on Finding Nemo. There was a little tiny baby fish, and Greg stole Tater's underwater housing today, so I think, hopefully, Greg got a couple photos, definitely got video footage, and uh, yeah, I, you probably just saw it now. And we're on to the next stop. We made it to Snake Island and this is a spot that we didn't go last time, I really wanted to check out, but it's just this giant sandbar that, as the name says, looks like a snake. And you can actually walk all the way across the sandbar, all the way over to this mangrove, you got this little island behind us, and we're gonna go explore a little bit. This little sandbar is crazy. There's even like a mobile 7-Eleven, a floating 7-Eleven here right on the water. If you want to get a beer or some Coke, you need to refuel your water or a coconut, which is most likely. And yeah, it's cool here. Such a cool place to fly. I mean, everywhere in the Philippines is just such drone gold. Not only for photos, but the videos just come out so, so good. I don't even feel like I need to be shooting tripod stuff because the aerial stuff here is just unreal. So I'm really stoked with all the photos from the air I've taken throughout this trip. If you ever come to the Philippines, bring a Mavic, get some cool aerial shots. There's some places that are amazing to look at like this but they're just taken to the next level from a photography standpoint if you get up in the air. That being said, if you do bring a drone to the Philippines, be prepared because there's always gonna be like three or four people flying as well. Everybody brings drones here because it's just drone paradise. And um, yeah, let's explore. I think we're gonna hike up the end of Snake Island. I guess this is the head of Snake Island and see if there's a view up top.
made it to the top of the hill. Views are great, but honestly, the drone views were a little bit better. A little bit of foliage in here blocking things off. And I think we're gonna hike down now and head to our next location. Rex, where are we going next? Next? Where are we going uh, where next? We're going to the other spot for, for lunch. Lunch. Yeah. I love lunch. Awesome. The best place, I think, for lunch. Calm little cove, some nice water to swim in, maybe snorkel in. There's a rope swing for some Instagrammable shots. And I think an epic place for a drony. Might be my new favorite lunch spot. Got rope swings. <laughs> we got basketball. And we got puppies. Oh, and I almost forgot about the epic view here. Really, there's nothing more you could ask for in life. So we're at a place called Kodognon. Kodognon, and apparently there's a cave yeah. somewhere there. that we have to crawl in. This is fun. And the craziest part about this cave is back during the Japanese war, the locals used to hide in here. They used to hide away from the war in here. So crazy, crazy spot. Whoa, this place is so cool. You come in this tiny little hole and then it's just a massive, nice. massive space in here. That was awesome, could not have been more perfect. And uh, now we're jumping back on the boat. Our uh, guide's Rex, and Rex has his own sandbar because it's off book, it's off script, none of the other tours go. They call it Rex Sand, it's just a sandbar apparently in the middle of, uh, in the middle of the water obviously. And I think it's gonna be cool. Everything else has been cool, so why wouldn't this be cool? And we're here at Rex Sand. There is one other boat, two more people here, but we, yeah, we basically have it to ourselves and it's so cool. Like, just look around me. We've got the other boat there and that background of those islands. Over here, there's like some weird temple, but it was apparently a part of a film set that way and this is just unbelievable. I think uh, I'm gonna fly the drone again. I'm running out of battery, but I'm gonna fly the drone again. Um, maybe just shoot straight up so I can show you the sandbar from above. Stop, stop, stop. Buyutan Island. This is our last stop of the day and again paradise again drone heaven all these palm trees 
Um, a bunch of girls in bikinis doing Instagram shoots over that way. There's like a really cool cabin that way that's gonna be a cool drone shot. Um, again, the Philippines is just drone photography heaven. The last time I was here, of all the images I shot in the Philippines, my clients bought drone images, aerial photos, by far more than anything else. It was to the point that I think I sold almost everything I shot. It was that crazy, there's that much demand, and it's that good of a place to fly. So I'm gonna fly and get a couple more stills um, from here, maybe a couple more video clips, and then I think we're gonna relax a little bit. Maybe throw on a bikini and pose against one of these palm trees myself. Note to self, when the low battery hits, stop flying and come home. But places like this are so incredible, so epic. You never want to stop shooting. You never want to stop filming. So I was shooting that droney that you just saw, and I got to the end point, to the farthest point away, and I got the low battery warning, but I needed to try to finish the shot. I got close to finishing the shot, and then to get back, I ended with only 3% battery, which is one of the stupidest things I've ever done with my drone. Um, but yeah, the footage came out beautiful, I think, and this is just incredible. It's such a good day here in the Philippines. And um, yeah, I think now it's time to just relax a bit and then head back to the mainland. Unreal, so good, but I am burned. Turns out that Jody not coming had more repercussions other than just missing her. I also got really sunburned on my back because Greg's a terrible bro and doesn't sunscreen the back good enough. So uh, yeah, my back is scorched. <laughs> it's absolutely scorched. And uh, I've got a ton of work to do tonight. So I'm gonna let Greg lead these guys on a sunset. I'm gonna call this an episode and get this work done to get some vlogs out to you guys. And uh, yeah, it's been good. So good tour B here in the Philippines. And I guess I'll see you guys tomorrow as we head to Coron. Peace.